Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of those who entered the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. As a boy, I used to go to Sunday school I never missed. They used to get a big kick out of me because I was always the first one there sitting on the steps. I went to church every Sunday when I was in the hospital. I never missed. I went uh, a few times when I had uh, my first leg on. Couldn't, I didn't go very long because I had trouble with my other leg and then I was a long time you know, before I could get around. I went a few times, you know, off and on when I could, got to where I could manipulate. But I never went steady. Eventually, I just kind of stopped going to church. It's just sometimes it's kind of hard for me to go. But uh, it isn't that I don't believe in them. I, I believe strongly in churches, only don't seem like I ever have time to go. But I, I, I think I can still believe just as strong as, as if I went every Sunday. Okay, Marge. Gotta go to work. That's the only thing I help Alvin do is just tuck in his shirt, you know, button it up and tuck it in. That other women wouldn't have to do for their husbands. But that's all. Gee, that pocket's torn, honey. I'll have to sew that tomorrow, though, because all the rest of your shirts are out on the line. I hope you have a fair day over there at the corner. Oh, I will. Thank you. Have you got your watch? I'm kidding. I don't need it. You don't need it? Okay, well, there's your hat, and I'll get your changer in the sack. Bye, Nancy. Bye, dear. See you tonight. Okay. Have a good day. Okay. And don't be looking at all them girls in the mini dresses. <laughs> Bye. See you tonight. Court has ordered James Earl Ray expedited to the U.S.
Mostly I, I listen to the news because I like to keep up with the news. And I get about 75 or 100 questions a day about the different news, and sometimes I get the news reports in the newspaper. Of course, I don't tell the people they won't buy the paper. I go any place I want to go. I, I never worry about people looking at me because, see, I know they're just trying to figure out, you know, what happened to me and think different things like that. You know? I wasn't sick of my life. It was a uh, circulation. First, it started in my toe. In fact, I, I thought I had an ingrown toenail. You know, they get real sore. You know. And, uh, I went to the doctor. I went to the foot doctor, and. Uh, I don't know whether he was supposed to do it or not, but anyway, he cut it open, and uh, it, it just kept getting worse, uh, you know, after that. So they amputated my toe. It took a long time to heal up. Then about a year later, why, well, it started again. But then I had to have my leg, first leg amputated. Uh, that was in uh, 37. the hospital and they amputated my other leg. Took it off below the knee, uh, thinking maybe it might uh, heal, you know, but it didn't. So then I had to go back and have another amputation. The KFWB News Center dispatcher has just handed this to me. There is a three or four year old child on the northbound Harbor Freeway south of Adams. That's the Harbor so, uh, Freeway. I never had any more trouble until 1941. Then it started in this hand. I went back and they amputated him. That's like I am now. See, the circulation wouldn't get to the extremities, so it gangrene, you know. They had to amputate the head of it to even let me ha keep what I got, you know. Thank you. Find it? When they told me they had the amputate, well, I was, had the amputate. I didn't feel like I was being brave. I just felt like I was just doing what I was supposed to do. My thinking was just to keep going, you know, keep going. That was the only thought I had. Uh, the main thing was it never bothered me. It, it's never bothered me at all. If I would let that bother me, I, I, I would go to pieces. I, I mean, anybody would. So I just take it with a grain of salt. Keep going. I just eat lunch here. Well, I like any kind of food. Of course, my wife fixes different things every night, but uh, just about any kind of food I like. 
course, they cook it any way I want it back there. And Mr. Brown, about 15 years ago, he built me a table with all my own stuff on it. They wait on me over there just the same as they do in the, the fountain. He calls every single day at this time. He calls and asks how everything is and if we're getting along all right. Uh, what did the doctor say? That's real good. Oh, but we did get some mail from Tommy. Just think of that. We got our first letter today. I'm doing fine. It isn't really bad if you hustle and do what you're told. My I boy left a week ago Friday for the Marines. But you can write all you want. But just don't send me nothing, okay? Tell Nancy hi for me. I love you all, Tommy. Tell anyone you want my address. The more letters I get, the better it'll be. Love, Private Tom. <laughs> Isn't that That's right? Really yeah. It's so nice. Of course, I have to take insulin, you know. Yeah, he has diabetes. I give him an insulin shot each morning. I had my eye put out when I was 10 years old and uh, with a slingshot. They told me, you know, to be careful reading. I guess it takes a lot of strain to read with one eye. I don't want anything to happen to this eye. So I just cleared away from reading. I don't, I don't do any reading at all. I mean, the books are... I don't think that anybody's handicapped if they can do anything. But I don't think I'm handicapped. There's nothing I can't do except dance or do everything else. I've known him for about nine or ten years, and I've never seen him off balance. I would say that he was a complete man. He's compassionate, he's a good father, and he's a good friend. I think that's about all you could say about a man like Alvin Burke. Just a real person. He's an inspiration, you know, because look at the man. He's so deficient in many ways, and yet he drives his car to work back and forth. So self-sufficient, supporting himself and his family very nicely with his newspaper. Now, I never have no complaints because Alvin takes care of all the bills, pays everything like he should, and always sees that the money stretches like it, you know, like it's supposed to. Well, we seem to do it all right. We seem to manage all right. I, I never wanted my wife to work. I told her uh, when we got married that she uh, would never work because I wanted her to be home, uh, especially when children's involved. We've had three children and never had a babysitter, not one time. You know, the doctor said that Alvin probably could never have any children. I get a kick out of him sometimes to come in here and want me to fit him up with a pair of shoes. And I just tell him, well, I'm sorry I don't have your size. You know, I mean, he's the kind of fellow that, you know, I mean, you have some fun with, and he doesn't feel sorry for himself and out of his handicaps that he does have and, and uh, doesn't want anybody to feel sorry for him. And, uh, I think that you've got to give the guy a lot of credit and uh, look up to him. Everybody at Christmas, because we love you, That's we think you're great. He's the kind of guy that if he wasn't there for a couple of days, everybody would wonder, you know, they would really miss him. Every day. Every day. You knew he got, you knew he got hit down here, didn't you, about a year ago? Yeah. And everybody that passes, whether they come well, walking or come with automobile, he's got a pleasant word and a pleasant smile. I don't care whether it's rain, shine, or what kind of weather. Hi, Mr. Dorn. How are you? That's the kind of a fellow he is, and we just love him. I know the whole family. As far as uh, Alice is concerned, I, I never saw or heard a crossword out of him. What are you going to do? Just play? <laughs> well, if everybody that had affliction looked on the life as he does, we wouldn't have half the trouble we'd have, that's all. 
He never has a bad word for anybody. He's always laughing. Never heard him complain. He's got it, and he's going to accept it. And he suffers, too. Don't you kid yourself. So many people walk blocks just coming by the paper from him because they say he gives them courage. <laughs> well, they send a... So many of us complain when we have our, all our facilities about us, good eyes and good health. He never does. I think you can help me with this problem, Dad. Mm -hmm. I'll take it over here. I think God must have helped Alvin somehow or I don't think he could have went on and on like he has gone. Three and six, Because Alvin is a very happy man. And we're very happy, too. We don't have a lot, but we're happy. And so if that's what God gave to us, then we thank God for that. We don't care if we have a lot of things or not. We're glad that God gave us what he gave to us. We might be happier than a lot of people. I believe in God. I know that there's something there. It, there's got to be. It always work out probably like people want it, but it's there. If you have faith yourself, you can pray and he hears you just the same as no matter where you are. If you deserve to get an answer, well, I think you receive it. I've asked for things, and I think I received them. Like asking to be so I could still be healthy, keep going all the time. There's no doubt about it. I believe in God. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with churches. I always figured that uh, if I had faith in God, why well, then I could uh, ask him what I wanted to ask him without being in the congregation. I mean, you have to have faith in God. You've got to have it. So if you had faith in him and wanted to ask a favor or why you could ask him any place. I don't condemn anybody from going to church. <laughs> I mean, that's what it's for. Well, we are very glad to have had you here this morning. Thank you, sir. Now, let's see. Give us one, too, there. I'm glad to be here. Good, no, that's fine. Just keep your change. Thank that's you, all right. Thank you very much. Good all luck to you. I want to get a paper. Silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I give thee. This film was not staged. Alvin Burke may be your neighbor. What does his story say to you?